Now we're going to go through uploading PDF forms and documents. Here's a quick reference list which outlines the locations where you will upload PDF forms and documents for the refugees portion of the application. And this is a quick list for where the sponsors forms and documents will be uploaded, as well as any optional forms you may need to upload. In the next segment, we'll provide you with a visual walkthrough for where to upload each of these files. From the application page, when you click on the PDF forms menu, it will jump to this section where you will upload the PDF version of the sponsorship undertaking form and also the Schedule II forms for the principal applicant and any dependents over 18. Just a quick reminder that you cannot upload a PDF version of the refugee's generic application or the Schedule II forms. They must be filled in online within the portal. For sponsorship agreement holders, the sponsorship undertaking form is called the IMM 5373. And there is a link here to download the PDF form so you can complete it offline. For community sponsor groups, this form is called the IMM 5663. And for groups of five, this form is called the IMM 5670. Once you have downloaded and completed the signed undertaking PDF form, you can upload it here. The same goes for the Schedule II forms. Here is where you can upload each one individually up to a maximum of 10 files. Or you may choose to combine all of the Schedule II forms into one PDF file. Remember to use the appropriate naming conventions for the files that you upload and that they are less than four megabytes in size. If they are not, you will see a warning message and you will have to re-upload a smaller file size. Now that you've uploaded the required PDF forms, let's move on to the additional application forms section. As we have frequently mentioned previously, the PR portal is used by many other immigration streams. So in this additional forms section, Although there are several forms available for selection, you are not required to include them with your application. Be sure to read the guide to know which forms you must include for PSR applications. Use the search box to locate the name of the form that you would like to upload. For the PSR program, only two optional forms, if needed, should be selected here. When an immigration rep is being utilized by the principal applicant or by the sponsors, you can upload those forms here using the use of representative category, or they can be uploaded within the representative's own secure section within the group members page. The second category is the appointment of representative in the expected community of settlement. You would use this form if you did not have any sponsors who will reside in the same community where the refugee is expected to live in Canada. All of the other options available in the drop-down list should not be chosen for PSR applications. Now we'll move on to the supporting documents section. This section of the application page is where the required supporting documents are to be uploaded for the refugees. We have already shown you where to upload the required supporting documents for the sponsors during the segment on navigating the PR portal, where we spoke about the group members page. So just remember that in this supporting documents section, you are only going to be uploading supporting documents for the refugees. The minimum required supporting documents for sponsorship agreement holder applications are the refugee photos. Be sure to read this information to know how to prepare the photos for uploading. This information is also included in the IMM 6000 instruction guide. For groups of five and community sponsors, they are also required to upload a copy of the refugee status determination document. Once you have finished uploading the required supporting documents, 
If the refugee has any additional supporting documents, you can click on that menu item next. When it comes to including additional supporting documents, you need to be aware that there are several options available in the searchable drop-down list. However, not all of them can be used for PSR applications, as there are some which are only to be used for other immigration streams. In particular, you will not use the option called Translation and Affidavit. This is because you must include any translated documents within the same PDF file as the original document. So for example, if the principal applicant's birth certificate is only in their native language, then a translation of that certificate would need to be added to the same PDF file as the original, immediately following the page that displays the original certificate. For this demonstration, I've already gone ahead and selected all of the possible options that could be used for the PSR program. Keep in mind that if the refugee does not have any of these documents, that's okay. They are not required for submission. However, if the refugee does have them, it is best to include them. Let's go ahead and take a look at the different types of supporting documents you could use. The first few items in this list are related to identification, travel, status, and birth certificates. I won't be going through all of the items, but I will touch on a few that need some clarification. For those who understand how to merge documents together, you may wish to simply use the identity and civil status documents category to upload specific documents. Just click on the question mark here to see which document types you will need to merge together into one PDF file for uploading under this category. Remember, the file must be under four megabytes in size, so this will typically not be an ideal category to use. Let's take a look at the breakdown of document categories, which may help you to stay organized and will be a quick visual reference for what may still need to be uploaded. Here's where you will upload passports or travel documents. You can upload them individually for each person, up to a maximum of 10 files, or merge them into one file that contains all passports for the refugee family being sponsored. Next, I want to talk about the refugee status determination category. This category will actually only be used by sponsorship agreement holders and only if the refugee they are sponsoring has an RFD document. As you might recall from the previous segment, groups of five and community sponsorship groups have already uploaded the RFD document under the required supporting documents section. Next, you can see the proof of status category. This can be used if the refugee has any other status documentation to include. For example, if they had previously lived in another country where they had a student or education visa, they could upload that document under this category. Now let's scroll to see the next set of category types. These document types are for proving relationships and are pretty straightforward, so no additional explanation is needed other than to say when you want to prove a de facto dependency, you could upload those documents under the proof of relationship category. The next set of categories are mostly related to legal documents or records. There are also two other categories here for uploading proof of education or medical exams. Uploading medical exams or records are particularly helpful when a refugee has been harmed physically. This is because it is evidence that they have a reason to fear persecution. And for these remaining categories, I will quickly explain what they can be used for. A letter of support is included to present evidence and persuading arguments to support the applicant's refugee claim. For example, a faith-based organization might provide a letter of affirmation that a refugee was dedicated, baptized, or participated in faith community, which supports the refugee's claim of religious persecution. The letter of explanation 
also known as a cover letter, is a good way to include a narrative for things that are unique about this particular application. For example, if you encountered the system glitch where you're not able to save the no option for the national identity card and had to put in mock information so you could submit the application, you would include that explanation in the document that you upload under this category. You could also include any relevant case-specific details, such as why there may be some ID documents with a different spelling for a person's name or reasons why a person is currently in detention in their country of asylum. The other category can be used for anything else that isn't in this list of options. In particular, I want to encourage you to include with all applications a copy of the country condition reports for both the principal applicant's country of origin and their country of asylum. This is because these documents help to inform the immigration officer of the particular context that the refugee finds themselves in. You can get these reports from the UNHCR website or Human Rights Watch or Amnesty International website. Canada's Immigration Review Board also has a web page where you can access a variety of links to information. Now that you have completed all of the additional supporting documents, we can move on to the Principal Applicants Declaration section. As an invited group member, what you see here in this section will depend on whether or not the principal applicant has been invited to the application. If you are a sponsor and you see a view button in this section, then this means that the refugee has been invited to the application. So they will need to sign in to the PR portal to electronically sign their declaration and consent online. If, however, you are the principal applicant who has been invited to the application to sign your declaration online, then you as the principal applicant will see a start button here to click on and open the online declaration form. Make sure you as the principal applicant read everything on this page first, then select your preferred options to the two consent questions showing here. Next, scroll down to the section where you will insert your electronic signature. Simply type your name to electronically sign your declaration. Remember that only you as the principal applicant can type your name here, and that when you do, you are giving your declaration and consent for all of the dependents as well who are listed on your application. Now scroll down to click the button to complete and return to the application. Once the principal applicant has signed their declaration, there will be a green ready to submit indication here. Now let's go back to the view that a sponsor will see when the principal applicant has not been invited to the application. In this case, you as a sponsor should see a link under the document name that you can click to download the PDF version of the declaration form, as well as a button to upload the completed and signed PDF document. If you do not see the link to download the PDF version and the upload button is grayed out like this, then you will need to open the group members page using this link because you have not likely toggled the no option for the question that the PA will be able to sign their application in the portal. Simply click the no option here in the group members page. Once you do so, there will be a warning that the sponsors must upload the principal applicant's signature, meaning that they need to upload the signed PDF version of the principal applicant's declaration. Once you have done so, you will see a green ready to submit indication. At this point, you should check to see if there are any warning messages which will indicate what you may still need to complete 
before the application can be submitted. The message will tell you which page the missing information is on, but not specifically what has not been completed yet. Warnings about the above application could refer to anything on the generic application or Schedule A forms, or perhaps a missing document upload under the PDF form section, supporting documents section, or the refugees declaration section. Typically, if you see a warning to complete the group members page, it means that a required document still needs to be uploaded for one of the group members. Or, if you are a group of five, it may mean that all five group members have not yet been invited to the application. Once you have finished everything correctly, you will no longer see any warnings here, and you can notify the principal applicant that the application is ready for them to review before submitting. So, what cannot be submitted via the PR portal? You cannot submit one-year window applications. You will submit these via email as per the current process. The same goes for blended visa office referred applications. You will submit these via email as per the current process. As well as JAS applications, SAWS will submit these via email as per the current process. And when a new dependent needs to be added after the application has been submitted to IRCC, using the PR portal, you will email IRCC external to the portal. For any other updates, sponsors should follow the current process, which is to submit changes via the IRCC web form. And this concludes the step-by-step -step instructions for invited group members on how to complete the application using the PR portal. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the RSTP helpline at the number displayed Mondays through Friday between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time. You may also wish to contact your local RSTP trainer, and you can find their name and email on the rstp.ca website under the Contact Us webpage.